Good morning. Happy Easter. Hallelujah. Really? Really? We haven't said that for six weeks. You haven't got a little bit more? A little bit more? Ready? Hallelujah. Excellent. Competition, uh, count how many times we sing or say hallelujah during the Mass. And people who get it correct, uh, we have an Easter egg for them, okay? Hallelujah! <laughs> that one doesn't count. Our principal celebrant this morning is Bishop Michael Kennedy. Our deacon is Kevin Gadd. Our MC is Louise Outram. Our servers are Hiab Tekle, Brooke Tekle, Mary Tutman, and Christopher Lovell. Conducting the choir this morning is Sister Janine French. Playing piano this morning is Marcia Wall. And playing organ this morning is Noel Taminen. Our readers this morning are... Hallelujah. Margaret Newton and Lena Hosway. And bringing up the gifts, Cora and Maria Armstrong. Thank you all so much. Hallelujah! That one doesn't count. We start from now. I invite you all please to stand and join us in singing our entrance hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. 
welcome you all to celebrate today the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, the, the source of our faith, hope and love as Christians. And dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. in the highest Let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, 
have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity. Grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed Cornelius and his household. You must have heard about the recent happenings in Judea, about Jesus of Nazareth and how he began in Galilee, after John had been preaching baptism. God had anointed him with the Holy Spirit, with the power, and because God was with him, Jesus went about doing good and curing all who had fallen into the power of the evil. Now I and those with me can witness to everything he did throughout the countryside of Judea and in Jerusalem itself, and also to the fact that they killed him by hanging him on a tree. Yet three days afterwards, God raised him, to life and allowed him to be seen, not by the whole people, but only by certain witnesses God had chosen beforehand. Now we are those witnesses. We have eaten and drunk with him after his resurrection from the dead. And he has ordered us to proclaim this to his people and to tell them that God has appointed him to judge everyone alive or dead. It is to him that all the prophets bear this witness that all who believe in Jesus will have their sins forgiven through his name. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Since you have been brought back to true life with Christ, you must look for the things that are in heaven, where Christ is sitting at God's right hand. Let your thoughts be on heavenly things, not on the things that are on earth. Because you have died, and now the life you have is hidden with Christ in God. But when Christ is revealed, and he is your life, you too will be revealed in all your glory with him. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magnola came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial clothes there but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial clothes there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial clothes, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciples who went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and he believed for they did not know, not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia is how we herald Christ's resurrection during our Mass. It's a Hebrew word meaning praise God or praise the Lord. The phonetics of the word, the very sound of it, even when you don't know its meaning, expresses pure joy. Alleluia. Outside of Mass, We tend to herald Christ's resurrection more simply as we greet each other with the words, Happy Easter. The phonetics aren't quite as good, but it's still an expression of our joy in Jesus' resurrection from the dead. And it's also an expression of our desire that others will also have the same joy that they will be happy. With the bodily resurrection from the dead of our Lord Jesus Christ, after he had willingly laid down his life for us on the cross, we celebrate the central mystery and foundation of our faith. It is indeed a joyful occasion. You might even say that 
It's the source of our joy. And we go to great efforts to infuse our Easter masses with this sense of joy. I hope you've noticed the flowers, the decorations, the music and singing, the candles, the bells, the incense. These are all things because we want our spirits to soar because joy is one of the first fruits of Jesus' resurrection. One of the high points in every celebration of Mass is the proclamation of the Gospel. So I find it rather curious that the Easter Gospel that has just been proclaimed doesn't sound very joyful. Sure, it mentions Jesus' resurrection from the dead, but it reads more like a tale of panic, doubt and misunderstanding. So let's take a little look. Let's look at the Gospel from last night's Vigil Mass from St Mark and this morning's Mass from St John because one follows more or less after the other and it gives us a more complete picture of what happened that Easter Sunday morning. So we heard in Mark's Gospel last night that Mary Magdalene and some of the other women come to Jesus' tomb very early in the morning to anoint his dead body. But they arrive to find the tomb empty. And so Mark tells us that a young man in a white robe, who we now realise to be an angel, tells them, Mary and the other women, that Jesus is risen. John's Gospel this morning completes the story telling us that Mary Magdalene runs straight off to tell the apostles Peter and John. Not that Jesus is risen, but she says to them that somebody has stolen Jesus' body and hid it somewhere. So Peter and John run to the tomb to see for themselves. And so... Putting together our two Gospels, they end with Mary Magdalene not believing, but thinking somebody has stolen Jesus' body. It ends with Peter seeing the empty tomb, but not doing anything as if paralysed by doubt and fear. And it ends with John, who seeing the empty tomb, does believe Jesus is risen, but not reacting in any way. We get no sense of joy from him, even though he believes. When, then, does the joy come? One more thing must happen first. I wonder if you know what it is. The disciples have seen the empty tomb, but to be filled with joy, they must meet the risen Jesus. To know or believe that Jesus is risen from the dead is one thing, but to meet and encounter the risen Jesus is another. The first is incomplete without the second. The first brings us a sense of hope, but it's the second that gives us indescribable joy and can transform our lives. We'll see in the Gospel readings for Mass over the next few days and weeks, we'll see the various personal personal encounters of the risen Jesus with Mary Magdalene, with Peter and John and the other apostles, with Thomas and with the Emmaus disciples and others. It's in those gospel passages where we see their joy, when they meet and encounter in the flesh the risen Jesus. It's the same for us too. 
You know, our Lord Jesus is an extremely polite God. He never barges in or forces his way. So if you want to meet Jesus, you have to create some time and space for this to happen. And that's part of what our Lent has been about. Our prayer, our fasting, our almsgiving has been a spiritual decluttering to make more room for God in our hearts. When he senses we are ready, he will come and give the joy that only he can give. Those people in the Gospels and throughout all of Christian history who have met and encountered the risen Jesus also desired to share the reason for their joy with others. True joy cannot be contained. It must be expressed and shared. A Christian who has met the risen Jesus but who does not share the good news makes no sense at all. If the Christians before us had not shared it, we today would not know the joy of the gospel. And so we must not let this joy be extinguished in our own generation, but make sure it is passed to the next. And this seems to have been very much on the mind of Pope Francis when a few years ago he wrote Evangelii Gaudium, the joy of the gospel. He begged us not to be Christian sourpusses who live, whose lives are like Lent without Easter. He invited us to be open to a renewed encounter with Jesus Christ and to share the joy of the gospel with others. In fact, he said we have a duty to do so. And whilst all genuine encounters with Christ do lead to ongoing conversion of life, Pope Francis reminded us that Rather than seeming to impose new obligations on people, we should appear to them as people who wish to share our joy. We have come to Mass this morning because we believe Jesus is risen from the dead. That's wonderful. Later during Mass, as at every Mass, we can receive the body and blood, the soul and divinity of the risen Jesus Christ in Holy Communion. May it be for each of us a moment of true encounter with him and a source of joy. And so when Mass concludes this morning, and we are sent forth, may we go with the joy of the risen Jesus in our hearts, and may we share our joy with those who may not know him.
At the Easter Vigil Mass last night, the water in the baptismal font was blessed and we had two new adult Christians baptised. Baptism traditionally is linked with Easter because it's in baptism that we die with Christ to our old life and rise with him to our new life. And so at Easter Sunday Mass, we are all invited to renew our baptismal promises, to renounce Satan and evil, and to profess our faith in God. And so I ask you all to stand for the renewal of our baptismal promises, answering, I do, in loud, clear voices to each question. So I ask you, do you renounce Satan so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting? And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. As we share our alleluias and sing our hymns of praise, let us pray with trust and hope for the many needs of our church and our world.
for Pope Francis, Bishop of Rome and Universal Patron, that he never tire of proclaiming the peace and forgiveness of the risen Lord. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have not heard the good news, for those who have left the church or live on their margins, for seekers and for those newly baptized into the faith at the Easter Vigil, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For new life that springs forth, for faithful stewardship to protect the earth's beauty, majesty, and limited resources, in thanksgiving for farmers who work the land, and for safety and fair wages for those who harvest, prepare, and transport our food, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For hearts of compassion to serve the hungry, the thirsty, the homeless, and the imprisoned, for those who live with depression and dwell in the darkness of the tomb, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the strength to die to ourselves and rise to new life this Easter season, and for all who have died due to the violence in our society, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those intentions we hold close in our heart, We pray. Risen Saviour, hear and answer these prayers. Let our hallelujahs fill the world with your love and joy as we seek to live our faith and respond generously to the needs of others. We ask this in your holy name. Amen.
say, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they are claimed. fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that, renewed by the Paschal Mysteries, she may, she may come to the glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you very much to Anne Millard and our choir and musicians and all of our MCs and servers and people who work behind the scenes here at the cathedral for all the, the work and effort they've done for the love of God and for the love of us uh, to make these beautiful liturgies over this past week of Holy Week and especially uh, Easter Sunday. Uh, my sincere thanks and my sincerest happy Easter, my hallelujah happy Easter to all of you. I truly wish all of you, your families, your loved ones, a very joyful, a very happy Easter. God bless you all. The Lord be with you. And with your Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.